So number one actually ends up being quite a bit of work. We're showing that the four points, A, B, C, D, create a quadrilateral that's a parallelogram. Now, parallelograms are something that we're going to learn about in another unit, but what we need to know is AB parallel to CD and AD parallel to BC. So the two opposite sides need to be parallel. And we're going to show the diagonals AC and BD are perpendicular and congruent. So I'm going to organize my work like this. Uh, to show the, si the sides parallel, I'm going to show the slopes are, are equal on both AB and CD and AD and BC. So let's start with the slope for AB. So for AB, I'm going from negative 1, 1 to 4, comma 3. So change in Y is going to be 2 over change in X. Uh, it's going, I'm sorry, yeah, nope, yeah, wow. Change in Y, it's going up 2. Change in X, it's going up 5. And then slope is C, D. And the Y is going from negative 2 to negative 4, so that's going down 2. And then the X is going from 6 to negative 1, so that's negative 5. And we know that positive 2 over 5 is the same thing as negative 2 over negative 5, so those are equal. Check. So I know that AB is parallel to CD. I'm going to do the same thing for A, D, and B, C. So A, D, and in case you've forgotten how to find slope, let's go through the process. We've got change in Y over change in X, or delta Y over delta X. I'm going to subtract my Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1, which for A, D, y2, let's call it negative 4, minus y1, that 1, uh, and then x1 minus negative 1, negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5, 1 minus negative 1 is 2, so we've got negative 5 halves for a d slope, and uh, let's speed this up for b c, we're going to do the same process, uh, the change in y, We've got negative 2 minus 3, negative 5. Let's see if this is good. 6 minus 4, that's 2. And those are equal, so yes, we have parallel sides. Now we're going to show the diagonals are perpendicular and congruent. So let's talk about perpendicular first. Perpendicular uses a slope. Remember, we're looking for opposite reciprocals. So for AC, slope. Um, I've got negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 3, and then 6 minus 1, sorry, minus negative 1, which is 7. And then for B, D, I'm looking for positive 7 over 3. That would be the opposite reciprocal there. B, D. I've got negative 4 minus 3, which is negative 7. And then 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. And again, negative over negative is positive. So yes, we have perpendicular there because we have opposite reciprocals. Congruent, I'm going to use the distance formula. Congruent means the same size. So I'm going to use the distance formula. So for AC, we've got the square root. And this one is the... Um, the distance between the x is squared plus the diff distance between the y squared. So we're subtract x squared, subtract y squared. So for ac, um, I've got negative 1 minus 6, which is negative 7. So negative 7 squared is 49. Plus, and then the y's go from 1 to negative 2. That's 3, which is the square root of 9. So 49 plus 9. That's the square root of 58. When I look at that square root of 58, I'm not worried about simplifying it because that square root of 58 is not my answer. 
Um, so even though <clears throat> I can divide it by four, I'm not gonna do that. It's more work that I need to do right now. And BD is gonna be the square root of, and if I look at BD, uh, the X's go from four to one, this is three squared, which is nine. Um, and then the Y's go from three to negative four, which is a distance of seven squared. So again, we've got that nine plus 49, or the square root of 58. So the, the lengths, the distances are equal, which means that they are congruent. So I showed perpendicular looking at the slopes, I showed congruent looking at the distances. Number two, a line having a slope contains the point. All right, so slope and point. Uh, the nice part is that point right there is my y intercept. So I know what b is. The slope is right there. So I can skip straight ahead from y equals mx plus b to y equals 2 thirds x minus 6. If you need to substitute in, 0 goes for x, negative 6 goes for y, and the math would lead us to b equals negative 6. What is the y-coordinate of the point on the line whose x-coordinate is 12? So getting the equation of the line is the first step, but now I want to know what, what is y when x is 12. 2 thirds times 12, um, 3, 4, 8. 8 minus 6, 2. So that y coordinate is 2. Number 3. Uh, number 3 is going to lead us down a deep hole. So just a heads up. But we've got a slope and we've got two points that are on the line. And I'm looking for the x value of the second point. So I'm going to ignore that second point right now and just use the point in the slope in order to write the equation of the line. This one I don't have a shortcut for. So I really need to go through. And y is 3, m, the slope is 4 fifths, x is 2, plus b. And that's what we're trying to find, is that b value right there. We're going to have some fraction work here. 3 equals 8 fifths plus b. At this point, if you're really relying on that calculator, you're going to be turning into decimals. Not a big deal in this problem because the decimals are pretty manageable, but I want you to be aware that when we le when we get into those decimals that are repeating, that are longer, uh, that math is going to, it, it might trip you up. So I'm going to subtract 8 fifths from both sides. Um, for me, I make this 15 over 5 minus 8 over 5 equals B, and so I get 7 fifths equals b. Um, just going with that fraction work. Using that 7 fifths now, I can write the new equation I've got, where y equals 4 fifths x plus 7 fifths. Now I'm looking for the x when y is negative 18, so I'm going to change the y to a negative 18 equals 4 fifths x plus 7 fifths. Um, at this point, we've got a couple different choices. We can multiply through by 5 to kind of get rid of that denominator. Um, we can also just deal with the fractions as, a, as they are. For me, I like to go ahead and multiply through by 5, and that's going to distribute to everything. The 5 times negative 18 is going to give me negative 90. 5 times 4 fifths is just 4x and 5 times 7 fifths is just 7. This creates a little bit easier problem to solve. x equals negative 97 fourths. Number 4, we've got endpoint and midpoint, and we're looking for the other endpoint. If we're having trouble picturing this, we're going to draw a quick picture, just a little sketch. We've got negative 1 8, or 1 endpoint, let's call it A. And the midpoint is at 4 2, 4 2, let's call that M. And 
and we're looking for B. So I know B, it better be down there somewhere. If that's a midpoint, we can look at this and kind of visually, we can go, okay, gotta go down and over. So from A to M, we're going down six. And we're going over five, so I need to go down six more and then over five more. And so I'm going to go plus 5 for the x and minus 6 for the y. Uh, 4 plus 5 is 9, and 2 minus 6 is negative 4. So I'd get the point 9 comma negative 4. The other way to do this problem, no. um, there are many ways, but I should say another way of doing that problem is to use that midpoint formula. And the midpoint formula is x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. We know x1 is the point that we know. We know the midpoint, the final number, is the other one that we know. So I'm going to say negative 1 plus x2 divided by 2 is equal to 4. And to solve this problem, I'm going to multiply both sides by 2. So negative 1 plus x2 equals 8. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, so x2 equals 9. And you can see that's exactly where I ended up. I'd do the same thing for y.